Oh, welcome back. You're still, still looking at uh, so many issues that uh, dominated the policy this week. Obviously, the Kogi Bayesa election is one of the issues that we talked about this week. We also talked about the uh, hate speech bill that really generated a whole lot of, you know, comments everywhere, not just social media, even on national TVs. A lot of people uh, have been making comments about it. We'll look at the, the merits, if there is at all, about the bill. And we'll also be looking at uh, the social media regulation <coughs> bill, because they are also, that one is also different from this age switch bill. Yes, Senate has been in the news this week, and uh, we'll be talking about it. But before we allow you to make calls, we have someone in our studio who will not just be dissecting these issues, it will also be responding to any question that you have. We have our own head of news, and head of news Lagos, and also the current acting president of Nigerian Guild of Editors. I should even say congratulations publicly now. Yeah, congratulations, Mustafa Issa. Thank you, Kayode. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, let's get down to the real job now. Let's start with um, the election that is coming the elections that are coming up tomorrow uh it's been filled with uh, all manner of issues especially the security threats uh, a, uh, the ob van driver was killed while trying to you know do his job and some some said one some said three and there are also reported cases of violence here and there in both states the question is, what should we do? Is it about the number of policemen or enough sensitization has not been done? You know, during the last year's, uh, you know, in this year's general elections, I, I said, you know, everybody is trying to heap blames on INEC. And I remember and I said, look, in as far as politicians are, are desperate, no matter the law you put in place, it will work. In, in any case, you cannot even legislate against desperation. It's clear. Now, I need have preparations, both the Bayesa and Kogi. They don't control security apparatus. Then, politicians, instead of you to go and campaign for the people to say, this is why you should vote for me with a sort of violence. I have seen pictures coming from Kogi and Bayesa. They are very discouraging. And it, it is being like this. In any case, both Kogi and Bayesa are known for violence-prone elections. It didn't start this year. It's always been like that. People have to die for someone to be elected. Why should that be? If you, if you really want to save the people as a governor, do you have to kill them? I don't think if you are going for service, you will never resort to violence. If it's about service, but it's about, about self-aggrandizement that you can go in there, kill everyone you want to kill to get to power. Hmm. It, it, it's saddening. It, it, it's, it's despicable. This, it, this is not democracy. In fact, this is bulletocracy. Hmm. Which is quite unfortunate anyway. Very unfortunate. Now, talking about the security operatives, we know that um, a number, over 30,000 policemen were deployed to Kogi State and Bielsa State, over 30,000 for both states. But um, they were deployed for the election. Now, is it, is it out of place for these policemen to already begin their work knowing that uh, the, the, the situation or the area is already tense because of these um, uh, elections? Because so far, we, we are recording deaths even before the election, mm -hmm. and these policemen have been deployed to these states. You know, even election or no election, you please take out of security in any state. You, you got a point. You, the only increase number because of elections. I, I, you see, this is why sometimes, you know, ANEC organized one event to review the 20, 2019 general elections in Lagos some time ago for, 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 news, for newsmen. I, I was there. And people would say, ah, don't involve the military in, uh, in elections. And I said something. I said, look, before the election, you hear reports. People are so poorly armed. APC will accuse PDP of training talks. PDP will accuse APC of buying arms for people. This kind of reports, how do you expect the voters to feel? 
So if you now deploy soldiers because of the kind of reports, will you blame the government? You know, I, 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 in, other, in other climes, in other, in other countries, people even vote on a working day. You vote and go to your work. But here there's, I'm sure by, by Saturday, there will be no movement both in Bayesa and Kogi. Because of election. The economy will knock down completely. In spite of that, we see this value because people are desperate to win. What they do now this is this. Area they know they may not, they are not popular. They may not get votes there. Those guys will send people there to go and cause violence. So there will be no election in those areas. Talk to them about Bayesa. The, the terrain is difficult. If you deploy policemen, it's a river, you get the point. It's a river state. Do they have speedboats? Those guys perpetrate the violence, know the terrible one at the police. So there's nothing they, they can do, really, to check any violence. The most of our, uh, it, it, it's, 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 see, what I'm saying is this. Politicians should stop violence. You, do, you see, I, I, that's, don't, that's I don't know how... That's my question. I don't, I don't you know. to be putting the blame on politicians. Yes, it, it is. It is dead one. Probably they are part of it. They are, they about, are, they are the cause of it. <laughs> What about what about the followers? How many of them will not use your or put on their thinking cap? When you know, for example, we know quite well that um, there is no manner of realignment we have not seen. <laughs> I, I can go down the memory lane. You remember in Oshun State where we have the Shola and Oyinlola contest elections and people wasted their lives. And these people joined the same party later. Yeah. You remember how, you know, Lai Mohammed and uh, Saraki were in different parties. Even and in, they also came together in even the same in party. Even in Ekiti. I remember in Ekiti. Ashagoni. We keep explaining. We put it on social media. We keep saying it that these guys are not permanent enemies. Yeah. So why make enemies for yourself? So should we also, also not blame the followers too? You know, we, are, we, are, we have a point there. Even in Edo now, you see, I am for Baseki, I am for Shomoli. I said, when you somebody, when somebody choose Baseki as a successor, you were not there. The day they are going to settle, you will not be there too. It is true that followers, you know, when you have poverty, Kayode, anybody can be induced with 5K to go and kill. To it's kill. sad. To kill, it's sad. So even kill on credit. Give me this, I will kill you. After, after killing, you come and pay me the balance. Life is, has, is that cheap in Nigeria today. It's, it's, it's sad. Then, you know, in as far, you know, when I was uh, covering um, um, security some years back, every month, the ADLEA um, command at Muta Mavi International Airport will invite us to parade those who have been arrested for drug trafficking. Young boys and girls, they are just couriers. You get the point. So one day, even as a young journalist, I asked the commandant, I said, sir, you bring us every month to say, you've arrested these couriers. I said, in as far as there's unemployment, in as far as there's poverty, the drug barons will always be able to recruit these couriers to traffic in drugs for them. Arresting them would also, if you have to go after the barons, you get the point, to stop this. If you're only catching the, the courier, the, the small boys in court, <coughs> you know, that thing is going to happen. They, they can easily recruit more to go and do their illicit mm. uh, traffic. So in politics, do the same thing. It is easy for these people to recruit people to do this violence. Number one, you, why don't do, do they ask these politicians, how come your sons and daughters are not with us here? They are probably abroad schooling in Canada and, and what have you. Then you bring us to be the forward to kill people. What about your children? What about your family members? They are never there. They use these people because there is poverty, you know, there is lack everywhere. They exploit. As I saw some people say, look, is it that these people they deliberately put us in poverty so that they will to use us during that elections? That is very possible. Because if people, look at you and I, for instance, when I come to work, go back home, 
and I see people gather fighting. I don't stop. Because I have here I'm going. You're supposed to be a peacemaker. You know what I'm saying is, <laughs> whether it's violence, I cannot stop. I'll see where they've killed peacemakers in, in, in Nigeria here. <laughs> it's true. Because people who are jobless, they will just gather. What if somebody was displaying, um, you see, gorilla or something, and people just stopped and we watch it. Not knowing that they did that so that as we are watching, they will pick your pocket. And they did that. Will, why should I stop? I have somewhere to go. Where there's riot, who participate in riot? I never killed any big man in riot, no. I never killed any son of a politician in, in, in this political violence, no. Because they are never there. Okay, talking about these um, young people that are perpetrating this violence, back in Kogi and Belsa State, we have seen pre-election violence. Do you think the electorate will be encouraged to go out tomorrow to cast their votes? You know, we always, in the last election, general elections, turnout was less than, we did 30%. Not, not mm. up to 40%. Uh, not up to 40%. Not up to 40%. Generally. Generally. I have seen a state, for instance, where the winner of an election, the entire vote in Ghana is not up to 500,000. A state that has a population of three or four million. And the registered voters of probably three million plus. 500,000, the person has won. But it turned out this abysmal. Are these type of reports of violence, pre-election violence, a lot of people have, somebody told me that you know, people are already running away from, from Kogi, coming to Lagos, and some other neighboring states, with a plan to return after, after the, the election. election. These are registered voters. Same thing with Baeza. So Baeza, some of them are moving to rivers, to neighboring states. Too. They say, ah, I know they will. Let them do their this year. after, and then I will return to my, to my place. So I, 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 I am not encouraged. I, I, I <coughs> try to be very poor on Saturday. I'm not trying to speculate. Okay. Um, um, we will do our best to see how we can increase this advocacy because I know I never would not be happy to hear this uh, submission you just made. But that might be the reality. But let's look at other issues before okay. we open the line. Um, Senate has been in the news. Initially, it was uh, the issue of the social media regulation bill. <coughs> and uh, we asked our guests that day, for example, in football, when the issue of racism was becoming a big issue, today, when you make racism comments or you say things about people that I remember a match uh, that involved England, the match had to be stopped twice because of the racist comments that was mm. being chanted. Now, as we speak, government is trying to regulate fake news, trying to regulate some other issues in, uh, this time around this, the, the, no, before we go into the hate speech, or let's put the two together. Yeah. What do you make out of it? Is it completely condemnable like we have a lot of Nigerians condemning this move? Okay. No, let, let, let me lay a background. Okay. You know, social media, like any other thing in the world, have been abused. You, you got a point. People have built the internet. People have abused anything in the world. When I see people just sit in their bedrooms, cocot fake stories, put it there to deceive the people. Or Saturday, you're going to see some results from Bayasa and Kogi. People will just see somewhere and just post fake results. It is dangerous. Some people now see somewhere and denigrate an entire ethnic group. And they are all kidnappers. The ethnic group, they are arm robbers. They are all drug pushers. This ethnic group, they are all uh, militants. This ethnic group, they are all, um, what do I put it now, terrorists. How, how can somebody just sit somewhere and attack an entire ethnic group? That's his speech. Or you attack me because I am from Edo. My only offense is that because I am from Edo. That's his speech. You attack me because I am a Christian. I attack you because you are a Muslim. That is his speech. I see that every day now on social media. There is one particular man, a former minister. 
Anytime you write any article in the papers, it borders on religion and ethnicity. When you read it, you want to go and kill some people. That's his speech. It should be encouraged. You know, four years ago, I was in Rwanda, I was in Gali, capital of Rwanda, and I visited the Genocide Memorial in Kigali as a journalist. I went to the media session of that memorial and I saw the role the media played in that genocide. An editorial referred to Tusis as cockroaches that must be exterminated. The message went out. They didn't see them as human beings. They now saw them as cockroaches that should be wiped away. That is the power of the media. Now the media has been deregulated. Every, they now say citizen journalism. Anybody now has access to the media. Even in your bedroom, you can't post anything. It is read everywhere. I, I, I will never support hate speech or people posting fake news in, on social media. I have seen pictures being manipulated. I have seen a video that happened years ago. You put it now as if it just happened now. There was a, a picture of an accident scene along the Lagos Bad Expressway that happened about seven years ago. Somebody posted it this year, said that it was a Boko Haram attack. How, how do you handle such people? You know, let me tell you. So, so let me, I, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the background. But our point of departure from the government is this. You know, we have this physician that. Uh, Everything you cure by new laws. I've taken time to take a look at even our old laws. Even the criminal code and the penal code. All this is already captured in those laws. Even the Cyber Crime Act of 2015. We already have all this one here. Please go and test the old laws first. Before bringing new ones. Before you say you want to bring the new ones. Uh, that is our part of departure. Then two, if you have problems in the media, the government should call the critical stakeholders, MP, MPAN, another group of editors, the NUJ, and all people. Let's discuss mm -hmm. and find a common solution. All Not right. for you to see somewhere and you have to impose a solution on us. I, I think that is just my... Uh, Okay, let me tie your earlier response when we were talking about the elections to this one. Yeah. Now, earlier you said that you blame the politicians for uh, these violence we are seeing in both Kogi and Bauza states. Uh, even if they are not involved, their followers are involved in some way and they are <laughs> fighting for them. Now, in the case of hate speech or social media bill, uh, one people would say that the government, the politicians also, have, uh, have their own fair share of hate speech. They use social media as well to disseminate information to their followers. And because they start this, then individuals also will continue in that, in that light. For example, if you are the acting uh, uh, chairman of the NGE and um, I'm your follower, because I want you to remain there as the acting chairman, I post something derogatory against your opponent. And you are not even involved in this. And then it continues trickling down and down and down. And then you might have nothing to do with this. Now, would you also say that uh, the introduction of this bill might also be a way to watch, uh, checkmate uh, the activities of politicians and government. Of, of course. You see, the law is no respecter of any person. It should apply to the letter. That if is, a politician... That is in an ideal situation. situation. If a politician is involved in his speech, you don't look at his face. That is, you see the symbol of, of the judiciary? It's a blindfolded lady. That means... She don't see whoever. If you come, if you go against the law, it will catch you. It doesn't matter who you are. That is what it should be. But whether it's the real thing in, in reality, it's a different discussion altogether. If a government official is involved in hate speech or posting fake news, please, the law should also go after him. It shouldn't be selective. We should do it that way. So, by the time you, you make some people um, scapegoats, 
kind of it will revolve, it will, it will go around, it will check this thing. Because if you actually, if you don't check it, there is a glass of hatred now in this country. A lot. So you probably blame their problem on a particular ethnic group. But it's not true. If you go to that, if you go to that area, you will see that they are in poverty. All of us are victims of bad governance in this country. Hmm. Both north, east, west, south, 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 whatever. We have victims of bad governance. There are no good roads. There are no jobs. You got the point. You, you know, I, it, when Brejuata was in power and uh, this fear price matter came up, you got the point. And they say, okay, national strike. Because of the way we are in this country. The strike started, protests started. There were so protests in southeast and south south. Because the fact their son was in power. So he was always right. You get the point. Then later, the price of petrol was reduced. Even those who did participate in the protests and strike benefited, benefited from it. <laughs> and I keep saying, former president um, Obasanjo increased fuel price almost six, seven times before in, in his eight years in power. That fear price increase did not exclude the Yoruba people. Am I, am I please correct You're me right. if I'm wrong. You're right. I don't, that is why, as I'm here, any issue I had to do with religion or ethnicity, I tried to run away from it. Because number one, there is no democracy in heaven. God does not ask you to choose where you should come from. I didn't choose my parents. Even Edo is a minority state already. Even within Edo, and for the minority of Edo... You also avoid that language. <laughs> there is no minority <laughs> no, no, what, what I mean, no, 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 what I mean, it tells on numbers. And we don't even know what minority Poli Politically, hmm. it tells on numbers. You know, I didn't choose to come from where I come from. It was God's choice. So why should you blame me for a choice I never made? Most of all, I, I, I think you really have time for the politicians <laughs> this morning. But let's look at uh, another angle that has to still do with the politician. Uh, um, uh, you've seen some of those comments because we talk to people in social media a mm. lot. You've seen some of those comments reminding us that this current government seems to be supporting this bill, even though the federal government has said, oh, the cyber crimes law should be able to handle all those things. So when we look at this, do you consider that the people in government probably have been real actors, allegedly, of this hate speech? Are they thinking beyond governance, where these things can also be mirang against them when they leave power? So to who's intention who, who is whose purpose is being served here i understand we have a caller on the line let's uh okay not yet okay we'll open the lines after you yeah. respond to this okay. question so do you think this is about good intention or it's just a political vendetta no let, let me ask you what is the definition of his speech by the way you just defined it <laughs> you said when you make you know, this i think i think when you attack an entire ethnic group or mm -hmm. members of a religious. Mm -hmm. To me, it's hate speech. But when you criticize government policies, it's never hate speech. But, but if you make if a I, comment if I say, that can, you know what, that if, can lead to no, violence, what about if that? I, if I say that the border closure will cause economic crisis in Nigeria, that's on point. That is not hate speech. You, you, you can criticize the government. Not the individual, but most times we go beyond the policy and attack individuals. You can criticize a government policy and program, not necessarily the person. But when you begin to attack a president because of his religion or because of where he comes from, that is his speech. All right, Mosti, let's pause you for a moment and uh, open our phone lines for our viewers to call in and air their views concerning the topics of discussion. Remember, we're discussing the security challenges faced in both Bayelsa and Kogi states. Uh, if you have solutions for the government in order to nip these at the board before the elections tomorrow, uh, please do well to call us. And also, uh, the hate speech bill and the social media bill uh, introduced at the floor of the House uh, sometime this week and earlier, although uh, we are looking at that. Do you think it's right for the government to have... Uh, another bill altogether uh, to curb hate speeches 
or fake news online. Uh, do well to call us. Remember to turn down the volume on your TV set when you call us. And kindly go straight to the point. Ask your questions or make your comments as fast as possible so that we can accommodate as many callers as we can. Thank you so much. All right, I'm um, still on this um, uh, matter on uh, hate speech or fake news that uh, the Senate, the legislators are trying to, to make. Uh, I, w I was trying to give an analogy yesterday, but let me bring it to you. Uh, in, the, in the book uh, that Judge Orwell wrote, Animal Farm, uh, there were some so-called legislators that made certain rules. All animals are equal and so on and so forth. And then at some point, they tweaked the, they tweaked the laws and said, all oh, animals are equal, but some, yes, some are more equal, equal than, than others. Mm -hmm. Now with this hate, if our adventure, the bill passes a third reading and all of that, now would, they be, would there be a clause that says, if you're in government, you, are immune, you have an immunity clause for this uh, one? Yeah. Or do you think it's going, because from what we've said in times past, some of these people, Presently, in the legislators, those who are not more in, in government, have made certain uh, statements that were quite inciting, especially during elections. And um, they are roaming free, you know, they are scot free and they are back in this law uh, to, be, uh, to be made uh, uh, legal. Now, do you think at some point some of these uh, you know, politicians or lawmakers or government officials would have some immunity clause concerning hate speech? Or fake news. I, I haven't seen a copy of the bill, but if they use the immunity clause, dead or arrival. In any case, I don't believe that any bill on his people could cure it. Let me just let me tell you. Fake news matter is a universal thing now. It's all over the world. And it sells. Who well, asked President Trump of the US? <laughs> fake news is a, now a global phenomenon. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. I don't think this issue of law will be able to rectify it really. And uh, to me, I have seen some laws in other uh, parts Mustafa, of the okay. I, I'm sorry whether we forgot to tell you that from time to time we will be doing this for yeah. you. We have a caller on the line, Osel Inge, right? From Bini Edo State. Can you make your comment quickly? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, my name is Osemi I want to talk about uh, the hate speech that is being proposed. Uh, I want to say the, the issue with that hate speech, you know, the, the, the implementation is what I have issue with. It is not actually the hate speech in itself. Uh, because we know that in Nigeria we have people who can abuse policies, who can abuse interpretations of laws. So we're going to be having a problem. Like what uh, the other man said at the, at the stage of there, that if we criticize government policies, it is not a speech. But we have people who can misunderstand it and say it is a speech. So that really have a problem. So, so as bringing that system, that a speech, into our system here in Nigeria, I don't think we, we are right for it for now. I don't think so. I don't think we are right for it for now. Remember during Jonathan time, you know, we criticized Jonathan, we criticized his policies, we criticized everything. But there was not, nobody said anything about hate speech. We still loved ourselves. But immediately we have this current government, we started having issues. Whenever you say anything, that's when we started having religious issues, started having tribal issues and the rest of them. So the government should work on themselves, not the policies. Because I see this as a way to trap the citizens, as a way to, to make the citizens to succumb to their will. You cannot just go out of people's mouths so that they will not say anything. So, so we should just strike it off. That, that, that policy should be struck off. Let's have some other callers. I think, uh, Zika, you have some other people on the yeah, line. Yeah, we have Peter on the line. Peter is calling from River State. Hello, Peter. Good morning, Peter. Thanks for holding on. All right, great. You're You're connected, Peter. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm calling from Putakot. Um, I want to speak on the um, today topic. I said the uh, speech. Uh, uh, as uh, our senior party, we know that 
anyone that uh, they catch as a uh, speech should be uh, made to cross. But you know, the opposition is the problem why they, you know, they, they, they refuse to do what they're supposed to do. And they're going about to tell us that the hate speech is what they are going to say, that to kill Nigeria more. Because they know by using that very platform, they are going to kill the young youth, the young youth, the young Nigeria as, as the, the way they want. So they need to look at it. The politician is the people that raise hate speech against each other. This one, PDP will, will speak against APC, APC will speak against uh, uh, SDP. These are, they, 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 they use their thoughts. I don't blame them because I blame our young youth who are going who are going around with them, using them, uh, they use the, the young youth as a thoughts to attack their brothers and their sisters. Who is trying, because they are, they are using this thing to attack the young youth. To, we are the uh, future leaders tomorrow, but we don't see that in Nigeria. We have already fed up as a youth. The only way the power is still in the hands of the, the old, uh, 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 oldest men. They are trying to kill our future youth because of the uh, hate speech on, on social media. They, are they doing the right thing? We will not allow them. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. We will not kill our future. We have Mba from Imo State, right? Uh, let's have your comment, Mba. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, yeah good morning. Hello. Hello, good, good morning. morning. Go ahead. Um, I'm Mr. Mba from Imo State. Yeah, the, the, hello, good morning. With you, go I'm ahead. We can hear you. Yeah. Uh, my, my, I want to talk on her speech. Her speech has been, according to what I saw yesterday, they said her speech has been in existence for a very long time. Yeah, her speech has been in existence for a long time. That was also what they said. And now, is it a particular, like what the right man they have said, a particular group, ethnic group, when they make a statement about his speech, nobody cares. But when from other ethnic groups make statements, it will be, they will be called to kill, to kill them. For instance, in 2015, three prominent elders from the north, they said if they did not hand over to them, that Nigeria would boil. That is their speech. For instance, Chioma and the, and the, and the, uh, what, what do you call it, the, the, the second in command to Obasanjo when he was the, the, the this thing, he, Danjuma, he said that if they did not hand over to the North, that the Nigeria would boil. Is that not a hate speech? So history again, that is not true. That is not true. Uh, Zanjuma was not quoted to have said that. You can check your history again. This is a national TV. We will do well to disseminate the right information. But your message is clear. Nobody should be excluded from this law. If at all, it will fly. And like we said, it may not be about the law. It's about we have enough laws in the land that can take care of these excesses by whoever, rather from the north, from the south, from the west, from the east, hate speech is hate speech. And we should do well to speak against it. Thank you, Mba. We appreciate you, but please get your facts right so before you make any allegation. There's you have a, some comments? A, there's a branch of, <coughs> of Excuse me. fake news now. Somebody will just manufacture a put. <laughs> An attribute to Shoyinka. And uh, the manufacturer you could. And the late, uh, what's the man in Zimbabwe? Now? Zimbabwe uh, uh, Robert Robert Mugabe. Mugabe. The manufacturer you could, an attribute to me, and put it there. So people will just believe. Jump on it. The manufacturer you could, an attribute to Zika. It is, it's, these are part of the things that people use to social media. I, we, there's no question about it, it's, it's being abused. But I have taken a look at, you know, you have um, new laws on this social media thing. For instance, in Germany. Can I pause you for a moment? Yeah, okay. Vincent is calling in from Worry. Vincent, you're connected. Good morning and welcome to the yes, program. Thank you. Hello? We can hear you, Vincent. Please go ahead. Okay. Great. I want to talk about the issue of that uh, hate, uh, hate speech. All right, please go ahead. Uh, so, what I'm trying to say is that the, this issue of hate speech is almost everywhere. The hate speech is in the market, is in the business, is also in the church. 
So it's in everywhere. So they should know that if they pass it as a bill, it will affect both those that are doing business and also those that are in the church and also in the school. In everything we do entirely in Nigeria, because some of times we exchange one, even a species in the marriage. So we should not allow this kind of thing to exist in our country because we love ourselves. Sometimes we misunderstand ourselves. We still reconcile as one again. So please, you people should help us. That is my own contribution. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Vincent. Vincent is more concerned about business. But, but, but let's take Samuel. <laughs> okay. Samuel is underlined. Okay. Uh, Samuel, you connected, Samuel. Uh, Samuel is calling in from Cross River yeah, State. I Yes, I, I I want to comment a little about this specific issue. Go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, SPs have been in existence from creation, mm. even from the Garden of Eden, have been <laughs> Okay. So this issue of speech noun that the government is using against the citizen is really wrong. A citizen need to comment on government policies and that doesn't make it to be hate speech. If issues come up that will affect the citizen, the citizen has every right to air their views concerning the policy. We are in poverty right now. There's no dispute about that. Our roads are totally bad. Take for instance from Uyo to from Kosovo to Akwaibo, it takes two days now for those who are using the road to reach their destination. And we understand during the 2019 election that the contract has been awarded to Giros Vega and they brought their machine. Soon after that, nobody hears anything about it. The road is in total collapse. And if somebody talks about that, it becomes hate speech. That's the little I have to say. Right. Okay, we have another no, caller. We don't have a caller. We love okay. the caller. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I think <laughs> you know, we, we know, need to redefine yeah. this I think hate when, speech when, again. when there is so clear definition of hate speech, people will take it to mean anything. If you, could, if you say my ro the rules in my area, the rules are bad, that is not hate speech. That shouldn't be. You are telling government that they come and fix your rules. They do have a business. So, <laughs> even in church. <laughs> so as I was saying, in Germany, for instance, what in the Lord, is, they said, all the social media platforms, if you post anything that had to do with hate speech or whatever, or that is false, they give the social media platforms certain time to pull them down. That's true. 24 hours, 48 hours. After which, that if you don't, they face heavy fines. Who can try that here in Nigeria? If you, if you post anything negative, or that is HSP or fake on, I mean, um, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Instagram, you get a deadline. If I make a work with them, we we'll take it down. So I do not spread. Then, two, there are some people that, even where they know that what will be said to them is. Okay, uh, you can just post that thought, okay. especially two. I remember, I'll okay. remind you. <laughs> we have Clifford from River State. Clifford, please talk to us. the hate speech uh, that is going on. Please go ahead. Are, are you listening? Very well. Okay. The point is, when you talk of hate, hate speech, when you talk of hate speech, it's everywhere going around the, uh, the country or the family, community and all that. So when we talk of hate speech, is it going to end on government uh, parasitized already or all around? Well, why I'm saying so? Even, even when, when a person is the pulpit and, and they talk about part of the other person, it's hate speech. Even, even when the community talks about the, the another community, it's hate speech. So we have to, we have to, we have to make it point straight and clear. You know, the, the areas, the, the, the hate speech should be forwarded to or be looked into. So at the end of uh, at the end of the day, no one will say, "Oh, is it, is it because of me? What of one or what is what is this other that?" You know. So that is my take this morning. Thank you.
Lovely take. Thank you so Lovely much. take. Well, let's listen to Ayo Mide calling in from Lagos. Ayo, you're connected. Hello? Hello, hello Ayo Mide. Uh, please go ahead. Turn down the volume on your TV set, please. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Ayo. Yeah. I uh, actually just want to contribute to the issue of hate speech. Yeah. Yeah, it's on down. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, go we on. can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, I actually just want to contribute to the, into the issue on one. Uh, this hate speech of a thing has been existing for long, not today. But what I just want government to know is... Yeah. What I just want government to know is... You... Uh, putting into, into the bureaus right now. Proper investigation needs to be done because, it can, according to what the guest uh, just said, a, a hate speech model can be what can be manufactured and what attached to someone. Then, do you do a kind of proper investigation to know, oh, this is the actual person who has said this or not? Because, having said all this, you might just look at it, okay, maybe this way, when after looking at the investigation and all that, you might discover that, okay, this person is from the opposite party. Now, using that one against this, which is not supposed to be. Because now, we are thinking about this age speech into the bills. Is it because the government is now bad and we are talking bad about it or we are saying what they are suffering that they are not putting into the bills? Because as at during the time of a person, job, uh, and all that, there was nothing like this in the bills. Is it because this man is not doing right and then we are talking? Because when we talk about this age speech of a thing, the people like Lai Mohammed will not be as alive now. So that's what I just want to say. Thank you. I am ready for that. Uh, uh, okay, I hope we don't have another caller. Let me just quickly put this in perspective. Dictionary meaning of hate speech says abusive or threatening speech or writing that expresses prejudice against a particular group, yeah. especially on the basis of race, yeah. religion, yeah. or sexual orientation. Let's get it in right perspective so that we don't turn we don't everything to, turn it to it hate speech. speech. Please, let's get it correctly. Yeah. If you're saying a particular tribe is, is you, you try to denigrate a particular tribe, and he gave a lot of lucid examples, like what happened in, in Rwanda, and don't forget that Rwanda genocide. And if you haven't seen it, probably you should pick up one of these movies that talked about that thing. Then you will know the import of what hate speech can do to us as a people. So I, I think we might need to still explain what hate speech but before, means. But before we talk we about that, no, there is, there is um, an extract from the bill on mm -hmm. ethnic discrimination. The bill penalizes a person who discriminates against another person. If on ethnic grounds, the mm -hmm. person without any lawful justification treats another Nigerian citizen less favorably than he treats or would treat other persons from his ethnic or another ethnic group and or that on grounds of ethnicity, it also says a person is guilty of ethnic harassment if he justifiably engages in a conduct which has the purpose or effect of violating that other person's that other person's dignity or creating an intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating or offensive environment for the person subjected to harassment. And that is what the bill uh, uh, has for, for Nigerians. So it's not about certain things we say. It has to be uh, basically maybe on a case of um, racism mm -hmm. or a case of tribalism. Uh, I think they are part of what this bill talks about. Yeah. Oh, and, oh, and before you, you, yes, you, and before yeah, you respond, what really right. caused the spark yeah. was when they said death penalty, a capital punishment me, for those people whose hate speech leads to another exactly. person's death. I, I, even, even at that, it's not for everybody. He said, if you post anything, fake picture, fake news, and it leads to violence and people die, then you feel the death penalty. But you see, even the criminal code are take care of, are take care of that. What you just read now about this new bill, if you take a look at the criminal code, it is there. Is there? I, I saw it yes. Somebody posted on Facebook and I read it. It's there. Well, let me. There, there is nothing new. You see, it's just that you know, these are lawmakers. I'm sorry to say, I'm not trying to attack everybody. You know, some of them. Some of them. You know, they are giving money to hire researchers. That mm -hmm. is one. Of the, they must have. A researcher as a staff 
please. Legislative how many of now. how many of them hmm. have employed researchers? So that when they start up to speak in the chambers, they are speaking from I mean we a well researched issue. That's why go to the UN. When lawmakers start up to speak, they know what they are saying. Sometimes just on Wednesday, somebody proposed a bill on inauguration of uh, Senate. And in the debate, it turned out that it conflicts with the constitution. They had to step down that bill. If that senator had done his own research, he would have known that that bill conflicts, it's all, it, it's, it's conflicts with the provision of the constitution. So that day, they just wasted our time and they go to pay them for I mean, city allowance and all that. You, you, you know, it's a, somebody said, on the call and said that, Georgi Obasanjo, I mean, Yadua, you really have all this. Let me tell you the truth. Hmm? Social media was not this potent. This potent. Many people did have access to social media. Now data is very cheap. Many millions now have access to the phone. I remember when former president Yuta said, "I am the most criticized president in Nigeria." That's true. And I said that I say, not really. You came at a time more Nigerians now have access to the social media, and it's got to get worse. Now it's gone. President Buhari is there. Okay. Civil, civil wars, you man. can pause it again. Yeah. Uh, we have Ugo from Benin, that's a dose state. Ugo, uh, Benin seems to be well represented today. Let's have your take, please. Ugo, you're on. Please go ahead with your comment. Okay, my comment. Okay, uh, I am actually calling to, you know, Make a comment on this hate speech stuff that is going on in the studio now. Hello? Go ahead, Ugo, but if you can turn down the volume of your TV set completely, that would be nice. Okay. Um, good morning, gentlemen. Um, I actually want to make a comment on this hate speech. Go now, ahead, go I, ahead. My name is Ugo, I'm calling from Benin. Go ahead, we can hear you. Okay. Like it, it, it has been defined clearly there that it has to do with denigrating particular race. I hope, in any way, it is not going to be linked to politics. That is number one. And again, if somebody in authority makes a hate speech, I hope the person will be brought to book. Because I remember this 97%. 5% issue, you know, after election in 2015. That statement alone traumatized a whole ethnic group in this country. Would that be classified as a hate speech or not? And if such speech comes from a highly placed personality in this country, what happens? All right, thank you so much um, for that um, call, Ugo. Uh, what he's saying, we've already stated this we're earlier, uh, where highly placed individuals make yeah, certain comments. But well, we have Musa calling in from Kano State. Uh, Musa, you're connected. Thanks for hanging on. Hello, Musa. All right, unfortunately, we lost the call. Please do have to call us back, uh, Musa. Uh, thanks for hanging on at the moment you did. Uh, talking about still on this hate speech uh, matter, we've had you know people talk about uh, if you don't vote for a particular person, then you get and drop into the lagoon and things like that. <laughs> now going forward, these are highly placed individuals who mm. made certain or were alleged to have made certain statements. Now, will allegations also pass uh, for for uh, hate speech? But before you respond to that, we have Success calling in from River State. Uh, good morning, Success. You are now connected. Okay. What of the world? Because during the election, I think that was uh, in 2015 uh, or, or so, somebody said that if we did not win the election, we are going to pump our lives. It's not a space. Uh, and uh, again, somebody mentioned that if we did not win the election, by the blood of baboons and dogs, we blow on the street. Is that the hate speech? 
I want to know why now they are putting her feet in Sodom. I do want to tell us that the government is not doing well and they don't want to talk anything about them. Who just want to who just want to verify what is said to Because in Nigeria I I had thought we have a a constitution that says that freedom of speech. I will no longer have freedom to talk on what is not. That's what we want to know. Okay, success. Uh, let's have successful answers to so before then, some please, of the gift, questions. You have another call? Yes, Gift is on the line before you respond, okay, Mustafa. Uh, gift, you're connected now. Go ahead, please. Okay. Hello, are you hearing me now? Very loud and clear. Hello? Hello? We can hear you, please. Go ahead. Yes, yes. I'm trying to uh, contribute to this uh, statement. I like people are doing something very straightforward. I'm trying to get people are doing something very straightforward. This, uh, this problem we are having now is can the, can the government can the government control ourselves? If the government can control ourselves, we can control ourselves. That's my particular on that one. Do you hear me now? Oh, uh, go ahead. We're trying to make sense from what you're saying. The problem we are having now for this bit now, if the, if the government can control their own speech, who say we can control our own speech? Thank you. Okay. okay. If the government can okay. control their speech, we can also... All right, thank you so much <laughs> for that. Okay. Kamori is calling in. <laughs> Mustafa, okay. you have to yeah, go away. Kamori, you're connected. Mm. We can hear you, Kamori. My name... Yes, come on, calling from Kaduna. Yes, please go ahead. Good evening, my sister. You see, most of uh, most of us in Nigeria, we have a lot of problem. Now only God can solve it for us. Our po our challenge, we know that me, I am not small boy. We are repeating the same thing, but everything has to put in place. We, somebody uh, like uh, one of the uh, journalists mentioned about the uh, Uganda. And we need to, uh, to arrange this Nigeria to good, the better for us. Somebody cannot come and give state patriot can put off most of us about problem. We have to get the law to guard him, waiting what they do. Because this Nigeria, we need to repair it. We can't say maybe something that happened five years ago and then we go to, we can't continue like this. We need to put this Nigeria in good place. That's, we need to arrange this Nigeria. Good morning. Kabiru, thank you so much. Uh, let's quickly have clarity on some uh, of this yeah. issue. Um, so the main issue of freedom of speech, who think he paid our freedom of speech and all that. You know, I don't support the the um, the hate speech, anti hate speech bill or whatever. But you know what? Yes, we have freedom of speech, but every freedom As comes with responsibility. Hmm. Where your freedom stops, you see my own rights begin and now as you are in the studio i have the right to stretch my hands early. but in the process i should hit you <laughs> that's true i'll give you an elbow exactly <laughs> i have the right to stretch my hands but i shouldn't hit you that would be wrong so you, every freedom comes with responsibility as an individual no freedom in the world is absolute hmm. because it could be abused we have law for this. Okay, just hold it again. Okay. We have Kenneth from Delta State. Yes, this is the first caller from Delta State. Let's have your take, please. Hello. Kenneth, please turn down the volume of your TV set completely so that we can hear you perfectly. Okay, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I want to say good morning to the faculty. Turn it down completely, completely. Turn down the volume or mute it if your remote is with you. Okay, hold on, I'm turning it down now. Is it okay now? Completely, is it done? Okay yeah, done. Or move away from the TV. Let's have your take now. Okay. Uh, good morning, gentlemen and ladies. Good morning. Uh, my, yeah, my contribution to this is that uh, our advice, media is kind of advice, that uh, before people to start criticizing even the uh, real, we should take time to even study what we're saying and to understand 
so that we don't just condemn what has not been understood because from comments I'm hearing from people, we don't think that people do not uh, we're sorry we can't take that. Uh, please call back, Kenneth, if you can. Uh, but we have Sonny calling in from Ogun State. Sonny, are you still there? Hello? Hello, Sonny. Please go ahead. Thanks for holding on. Uh, okay. I, okay, good morning. Yeah, good morning. I, I, I just want to make, make a contribution to the ATF's uh, uh, law that is coming out. Uh, what, what I just want to say is that if I say, and I, I feel I need to kill my people, is it hate speech? I want to find out, if I say full I need people, they are killing my people, is it hate speech? Or if full I need my destroy my farmland, is it hate speech? If they are trying to, uh, uh, is it uh, uh, Rwanda or where, where the Rwanda road? If you recall what happened, before they make that law, you will not compare to what is happening in Nigeria. In Nigeria. They, they thought that there was killing because of trespassing issues. People were president of that state died because of that issue. Now, if, if you are a president that you are not, you are not, you are not, you are not ruling well, I'm fuck, uh, and I'm uh, saying that uh, this thing, uh, the way you are going about uh, Nigeria issue is not, it's not, it's not, it's not proper. You are, you are, you are, you, 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 there's, there's maybe some kind of sentiment attached to that presidency. You are not carrying every, every trap along. Is it a speech? So what, what are we trying to say? Thank you. Questions. Okay, let's start from the last yeah, one because of time. One. You know, if you feel anyone attacks your farm, it's a suspected criminal. You can report that story without attaching its ethnic background. You, you, get, you get the point now. See, you, you get my, say, let, me, let, me, let me repeat myself. If a full animal attacks your farm, of course he's full animal. He's not committed that crime on behalf of the entire full animal. I don't know if you get my point. So you can't attach an ethnic color to that your report. Then number two, if you're an Igbo man, is called for kidnapping. Please don't call him an Igbo kidnapper. He is a criminal. He didn't commit that kidnapping on behalf of the Igbo. That's true. Then if 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 an Edo man goes into arm robbery, call him an arm robber. Don't say Edo arm robber. But he didn't commit that robbery on behalf of Edo people. No. That is my that is my, my, is my I, view. And I think in balance to that, I remember yeah. I was part of this uh, yeah. discussion somewhere mm. when they say, why are we now talking about uh, Fulani hates me, Fulani this, that what about the time of Niger Delta? They should have just called them militants and not Niger Delta uh, militants. militants. No, that's what I'm so saying. So let's remove the adjective yeah, yeah, and yeah, call yeah, them yes. what the they are. Exactly. And it rather than the criminal is a criminal anyway. It exactly. doesn't matter. And they exist background. everywhere. Yeah. Hmm. I know it's all over. Even, you know, the media, even in, even in, in the Western countries, you see, an Islamic terrorist. But when the Christian commits any crime, nobody calls him a Christian terrorist. It's also an argument. You know, it's, it's all over. It's all people to Nigeria. You know, the media will control the narrative. Then two, well, I'm talking about the freedom of speech. Then that statement you said, President Buhari made some years ago that uh, blood of baboons, blah, blah, blah. I think he took one newspaper to court on this matter. To come and put to the court where he made that statement. There was no evidence. That newspaper had to apologize. I said, let, let, me, let me get that straight. Uh, you know, let me get it straight. It's not, uh, it's not, uh, I think sometimes we can do a little more research before coming on air to say whatever I want to say. I don't joke with research really. I, I because we are the business of informing people. If you are not well informed, you can't inform the people. That's true. That is why I do my research. That's true. Really. So do we still have Doris on the line? Hello, Doris. Okay, we, we've lost Doris. And now, the, the confusion still on this hate speech matter is where to draw the line. Someone's asking if someone attacked my farmland, is that hate speech? Would that be a hate action? Yeah, not I think we speech? have Raymond now. Yeah, Raymond on the line. <laughs> Hello, Raymond. We'll come back to that. Raymond, please turn down the volume of your TV set completely, or you move away from your TV so that we can hear you and you can also hear us. Talk to us. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. 
Good morning, John. Are you checking me? Very well. Go ahead. I am Raymond Salamanca. Okay. Okay. The, the issue about hate speech bill is uh, is generating a lot of concern within the Nigerian population because if you look at what is going on in the country right now, Shawara is being is being detained because he was trying to organize a revolution. All these things are arising from maybe disquietness within people. It's happening all over the country. There is disquietness within the country. All these things should be addressed first before you queue into his speech bill or what to do to offenders. People everywhere in Nigeria, they, they complain about all sorts of things. But let me ask you, let me, let me make this point clear. In the last election, this uh, governor of Tadina State, Erufai, said that the white people coming to observe the, uh, observe the election will go back in body bag. That is her speech at its zenith. He should be punished. And it's, that, it's those kind of speech that should be punished and be investigated. It's not, people, it's not what people do in the social media that should be investigated. People have their right to air whatever they, they like. But it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be of most concern to people. So, I don't know, man. What you are discussing is, is good. I commend the, the other, yeah, yes, yes, the guest is doing fine. He said he's not supporting the SPG because of, of what is, you know, coming up. Okay. Yeah, it's not just a guest, it's an in-house guest and it's one of us. So thank you so much. Uh, before we wrap it up, uh, let's, uh, like he has said, and we should also put it on record, mm -hmm. that uh, no one will be immune if at all this bill sails through. Or let us put life to the existing laws. That's, that's what we are saying here. Mm -hmm. Let's put life to the existing laws. Whether you're a governor, if you have immunity, when you leave government, you can be tried over careless comments that that constitute what we call hate speech. Yeah. So it, 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 we've, spoke, we've spoken so much about hate speech yeah. and the yeah. social media yeah. view. In conclusion, what will you be telling the people of Kogi and Bayasa as we look at the election tomorrow? If we can have this kind of carnages before election, somebody somewhere is afraid. You know, they say money, money shows the day. I plead with them. The voters in Kogi and Bayesa to please go out and vote, but in doing so, be security cautious. If your life is threatened, please go back. All right. Mm. Thank you most kindly, yes. Mr. Faisa, head of News Lagos. Uh, thank you for your time with us on the program. You're welcome. All right, we'll take a quick, quick break, and when we come back, Blessing Wars will be joining us for some sports update. Please stay with us. <laughs>